بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear brothers and sisters May Allah peace be upon you Alhamdulillah All praise be to Allah First of all I would like to thank Allah for allowing me the ability to show you a hadith Today I will show you a hadith from Sahih Al-Bukhari If I make mistakes while explaining a hadith I hope you will forgive me. Hadith of the day from Sahih Al-Bukhari, Book 1, Revelation. I seek refuge with Allah from the accursed shaitan. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Narrated, Abdullah bin Abbas. Abu Sufyan bin Hab informed me that Heraclius had sent a messenger to him while he had been accompanying a caravan from Quraysh. They were merchants doing business in Sham, Syria, Palestine, Lebanon, and Jordan, at the time when Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, had a truce with Abu Sufyan and Quraysh infidels. So Abu Sufyan and his companions went to Heraclius at Ilya, Jerusalem. Heraclius called them in the court and he had all the senior Roman dignitaries around him. He called for his translator who, translating Heraclius's question said to them, Who amongst you is closely related to that man who claims to be a prophet? Abu Sufyan replied, I am the nearest relative to him amongst the group. Heraclius said, Bring him, Abu Sufyan, close to me and make his companion stand behind him. Abu Sufyan added, that Heraclius told his translator to tell my companions that he wanted to put some questions to me regarding that man, the prophet, and that if I told a lie they, my companions, should contradict me. Abu Sufyan added, By Allah, had I not been afraid of my companions labeling me a liar, I would not have spoken the truth about the Prophet. The first question he asked me about him was, What is his family status amongst you? I replied, He belongs to a good, noble, family amongst us. Heraclius further asked, Has anybody amongst you ever claimed the same, that is to be a Prophet, before him? I replied, No. He said, Was anybody amongst his ancestors a king? I replied, No. Heraclius asked, Do the nobles or the poor follow him? I replied, it is the poor who follow him. He said, are his followers increasing or decreasing, day by day? I replied, they're increasing. He then asked, does anybody amongst those who embrace his religion become displeased and renounce the religion afterward? I replied, no. Heraclius said, have you ever accused him of telling lies before his claim to be a prophet? I replied, no. Heraclius said, does he break his promises? I replied, no. We are at truce with him but we do not know what he will do in it. I could not find the opportunity to say anything against him except that. Heraclius asked, have you ever had a war with him? I replied, yes. Then he said, what was the outcome of the battles? I replied, sometimes he was victorious, and sometimes we. Heraclius said, what does he order you to do? I said, he tells us to worship Allah and Allah alone and not to worship anything along with him, and to renounce all that our ancestors had said. He orders us to pray, to speak the truth, to be chaste, and to keep good relations with our kith and kin. Heraclius asked the translator to convey to me the following, I asked you about his family and you replied that he belonged to a very noble family. All the apostles come from noble families amongst their respective peoples. I questioned you whether anybody else amongst you claimed such a thing, your reply was in the negative. If the answer had been in the affirmative, I would have thought that this man was following the previous man's statement. Then I asked you whether any of his ancestors was a king. Your reply was in the negative, and if it had been in the affirmative, I would have thought that this man wanted to take back his ancestral kingdom. I further asked whether he was ever accused of telling lies before he said what he said, and your reply was negative. So I wondered how a person who does not tell a lie about others could ever tell a lie about Allah. I then asked you whether the rich people followed him or the poor. You replied that it was the poor who followed him. And all the apostles have been followed by this very class of people. Then I asked you whether his followers were increasing or decreasing. You replied that they were increasing, and this is the way of true faith, till it is complete in all respects. I further asked you whether there was anybody who, after embracing his religion, became displeased and discarded his religion. Your reply was negative, and this is, the sign of, true faith when its delight enters the hearts and mixes with them completely. I asked you whether he had ever betrayed, 
You replied in the negative and likewise, the apostles never betray. Then I asked you what he ordered you to do. You replied that he ordered you to worship Allah and Allah alone and not to worship anything along with him and forbade you to worship idols and ordered you to pray, to speak the truth, and to be chaste. If what you have said is true, he will very soon occupy this place underneath my feet and I knew it, from the scriptures, that he was going to appear but I did not know that he would be from you, and if I could reach him definitely, I would go immediately to meet him and if I were with him, I would certainly wash his feet. Heraclius then asked for the letter addressed by Allah's messenger which was delivered by Daya to the governor of Bushra, who forwarded it to Heraclius to read. The contents of the letter were as follows. In the name of Allah the Beneficent, the Merciful, this letter is, from Muhammad the slave of Allah and his apostle to Heraclius the ruler of Byzantine. Peace be upon him, who follows the right path. Furthermore, I invite you to Islam, and if you become a Muslim you will be safe, and Allah will double your reward, and if you reject this invitation of Islam you will be committing a sin of Arisian, Tillis, farmers that is your people. And Allah's statement smiley face. O people of the scripture. Come to a word common to you and us that we worship none but Allah that we associate nothing in worship with him, and that none of us shall take others as lords beside Allah. Then, if they turn away, say, bear witness that we are Muslims, those who have surrendered to Allah, chapter, 3, verse, 64. Abu Sufyan then added, when Heraclius had finished his speech and had read the letter, there was a great huye and cry in the royal court. So we were turned out of the court. I told my companions that the question of Ibn Abi Kabsha, the Prophet peace be upon him, Muhammad, has become so prominent that even the king of Bani al asfa Byzantine, is afraid of him. Then I started to become sure that he, the Prophet, would be the conqueror shortly till I embraced Islam, that is Allah guided me to it. The sub-narrator adds, Ibn al nachr was the governor of Ilya, Jerusalem, and Heraclius was the head of the Christians of Sham. Ibn al nachr narrates that once while Heraclius was visiting Ilya, Jerusalem, he got up in the morning in a sad mood. Some of his priests asked him why he was in that mood. Heraclius was a foreteller and an astrologer. He replied, At night when I looked at the stars, I saw that the leader of those who practice circumcision had appeared, become the conqueror. Who are they who practice circumcision? The people replied, Except for the Jews nobody practices circumcision, so you should not be afraid of them, Jews. Just issue orders to kill every Jew present in the country. While they were discussing it, a messenger sent by the king of Ghassan to convey the news of Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, to Heraclius was brought in. Having heard the news, he, Heraclius, ordered the people to go and see whether the messenger of Ghassan was circumcised. The people, after seeing him, told Heraclius that he was circumcised. Heraclius then asked him about the Arabs. The messenger replied, Arabs also practice circumcision. After hearing that, Heraclius remarked that the sovereignty of the Arabs had appeared. Heraclius then wrote a letter to his friend in Rome who was as good as Heraclius in knowledge. Heraclius then left for Homs, a town in Syrian and stayed there till he received the reply to his letter from his friend who agreed with him in his opinion about the emergence of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the fact that he was a Prophet. On that, Heraclius invited all the heads of the Byzantines to assemble in his palace in Homs. When they assembled, he ordered that all the doors of his palace be closed. Then he came out and said, O Byzantines! If success is your desire and if you seek the right guidance and want your empire to remain then give a pledge of allegiance to this prophet that is Ebrace Islam. On hearing the views of Heraclius, the people ran towards the gates of the palace like onagers but found the doors closed. Heraclius realized their hatred towards Islam and when he lost hope of their embracing Islam, he ordered that they should be brought back into the audience. When they returned, he said, what already said was just to test the strength of your conviction and I have seen it. The people prostrated before him and became pleased with him, and this was the end of Heraclius' story, in connection with his faith. Hadith Reference, Sahih al-Bukhari, in Book Reference, Book 1, Hadith 7. Thank you for watching Hadith Official. Hadith Official. Subscribe and hit the bell for upcoming content. Like and share. Subscribe and follow on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.